Hello and welcome to episode 388 of the Mark and Me podcast. As always, I'm your host Mark. Now today's episode is the first in a three-part series celebrating the release of Terrifier 3. Hopefully you're a fan of these horror movies because Terrifier 3 right now is sitting above Joker 2 in the box office. This achievement in horror is insane and Damien Leone's work has been paying off so well. It's incredible to see with the budget he works with how he makes these incredible horrors that just blow up and have this huge phenomenon behind them and it's amazing to see just how popular after only a few days of release Terrifier 3 is breaking records. So joining me on today's episode for the first part is Phil Facone. This is the producer of Terrifier 1, 2 and 3. He's an amazing guy, he's so humble, so down to earth, and is the reason how Terrifier 1 got made. So the story and the journey that he's been on has been so great, and we get to talk about this in great detail today on this episode. But before I get to that interview for you, I do like to use the intro for every episode of Mark and Me to talk about my previous episode. I was joined by Gia Ford. I've told you since this episode has been out quite a few times, you should go and listen to her brand new album, Transparent Things. It's so good, one of my contenders of the album of the year, and a huge thanks to Jia and all her team for sharing the episode. The numbers are amazing, and I can't wait to go and see her next month in concert. But before we get to that interview, let's give a shout out to one of the sponsors of the podcast, Vice Press. If you're a huge fan of horror or movies, you will absolutely love their stuff. They have exclusive limited edition posters, art prints, so many different things on their site that you'll instantly fall in love with. I've got so much of their stuff and they support the greatest artists in the world. It's amazing to go on their site and see all the licensed prints and posters and so many great designs. And if you're a fan of horror, my God, there's stuff like The Thing, there's Jaws, there's Halloween, there's so much to check out. And the good thing about Vice Press is they do offer a 10% discount if you use the code MARKANDME10. That's all you have to do when you go on their site. Or if you're listening right now on the show notes to the episode, there is a link that will take you straight to the site and give you that automatic 10% off. And you should treat yourself because they've got some incredible stuff. But now I think it's time to get to the interview with me and Phil. So here we both are talking all things Terrifier. Phil, welcome to the Mark and Me podcast. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. What I do with all guests, Phil, I've done over 370 episodes now, and I always like to go down a trip down nostalgia lane. I like to know where it all started for you with film. Was there a certain film you maybe bought with your pocket money or rented out or was given to you that made you fall in love with cinema? Uh, let's see. I, you know, Growing up, when I grew up, it was uh, Westerns and and war movies for the most part. My mother was into rom-coms and stuff like that, but uh, my father was into Westerns and and, uh, war movies. I I grew up uh, wanting to be Kirk Douglas, um, wanting to be Little Joe from Bonanza. Um, So it it was Westerns. Um, The Magnificent Seven was like one of my biggest movies. you talk about war movies. It was the Dirty Dozen, a Great Escape. These are movies that I I, I grew up on and wanted to be an actor. Um, then I realized with a face like mine, I'm not going <laughs> to be able to support my family. So I, uh, I, I opted for different work. Uh, so I worked on Wall Street for 30 years and um, I had gotten sick in 2007. And um, I was pretty much... Uh, chained to my house for two years. And when I finally uh, got out of it, uh, I decided, well, my doctor told me I should be doing something. <laughs> I said, yeah, I got to do something. And I, uh, I, I started writing a movie uh, with a friend of mine, John DeMeo. We wrote uh, Joe's War. And um, after I did that, it was about PTSD. And I met a bunch of veterans. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make the movie. I, I don't care. I'm making the movie. And when I was making the movie, that's when I met Damien. That's amazing. So what a contrast from working for so many years on such a hectic and different lifestyle and such different demands to then saying, fuck it, I'm going to make a film. Yeah, I was, t- I was told by many people I shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, but doesn't, doesn't that make you want to do it more? Of course. They told me not to go to Wall Street. Exactly. And look, 30 years later, you still did it. Yeah. 
So you met Damien and then I suppose is the rest history. Was it a case of discovering his ideas and it was, it was actually nothing like that, believe it or not. Um, he, uh, you know, he was mentioning about this movie that he wanted to do about a clown. And, um, I told him I'm really not interested in that stuff, but, but I said, um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to raise funds for a, a, an action film. I said, um, but give me what you're looking to do. And, uh, I'll put that in there. And if somebody wants to do the, the horror film, he'll do it with you. So he sent me what he wanted to do. And I said, that's it. And he said, yeah, I said, I'll tell you what. And, uh, we partnered up and we did, um, terrifier. I said, I want to learn special effects. That's, that's it. Teach me special effects and we'll do it. And, uh, he thought I was full of shit. And I said, let me know when you got a bank account. He goes, I got one. And I sent him the check. And he goes, holy shit. He goes, I thought you were fucking around. Um, so uh, when we when we got there, just as that happened, uh, I have, a, I have a, uh, a house in Staten Island that I was renting out. And they moved out. And I said, I told my wife, don't rent it. And I said, Damien, we have a studio. And we built everything in the house. And, uh, and it, it worked out nice worked out nice what was it about the special effects that made you want to take such a strong interest is it the fact that you've watched so many great films in your life and just been blown away how people can make these things look so good yes it, 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 absolutely when you when you look at certain films um you, you look at the effects and you go how they do that how they do that how they do that then when i did joe's war and um he was on set i helped him on my set because i i couldn't really afford to pay anybody i was just like out of the budget, I said, just, you know, just you and I'll help you. And uh, I was just pumping blood and everything. And I was like, ah, this is cool how he did that. That's cool how he did that. And uh, that's what that's what got the juices flowing, because I said, I want to learn this stuff. And um, like I said, we hit it off right on Joe's war. And uh, and since then, he's, he's like he's like, a, you know, I, I like to say a son uh or a, a brother i like to say brother but he's so much younger than me it's more like he's like i say he's <laughs> a much actually younger my brother. son's age yeah did it uh i mean when i look at my kind of taste for film i love people like john carpenter i love the thing i love uh halloween and those films are all very based on practical effects and that's why I f when i watch these films today i still feel they hold up they don't look as dated as some cgi or green screen and with Terrifier, with obviously the makeup and gore and the practical effects, that must have been so incredible to be learning as well as being there in the studio with your friends and family and seeing how it actually is all put together. I don't know if there's a better way to learn than being hands in on the set doing it yourself. Oh, God, it's, it's, it's amazing. And my whole family became part of it because when we did Terrifier 2, my daughter's afraid of clowns. Oh, God. And we did terrify it too, and we built everything <laughs> in my basement. And every time she'd come down, there's a there's the severed head of Art the Clown on the shelf that she had to deal with. But in terrify in terrify it too, my daughter's body parts are all over the movie. My wife, <laughs> every time I needed a body part, I'd call upstairs, Lisa Marie, come on down, Lisa, come on down, and we'd get a body part. So it, it was cool. I loved it. I, I love doing it. It's it's so much fun. Um, it's it's cool. It, it really is. I don't know what else to say. I mean, it, it's it's one of the biggest joys I have on the set. Please tell me that your daughter's now not so afraid of clowns, or has it made it even worse? Oh no, she uh, she actually came to the theater and watched Terrifier two in the theater. Um, she's definitely not as afraid of clowns. I, I'll tell you the type of father I am. I used to hide clowns around the house. So, uh, <laughs> oh, I when we when we shot the 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 teaser for um terrifier i was sending the clown this is before dave took the part before we gave dave the part i sent the i was going to take the clown and bring him to manhattan to her apartment and let him ring the bell oh and then i God. thought about it and i said if she passes out i'm not going to be able to get in there so i said i'll let it go but i almost did that one day you're going to be presented with this massive bill for therapy of like, dad, you've really <laughs> fucked my head up for like 10 years now. And I need some serious mental health. She's she's thank God she was, she's older now. She's okay. I think <laughs> hopefully, yeah, these things, may have, you know, you know, you never know when it might crop up, but uh, I mean, if that's the way she wants to be and she's in the house and she's getting involved and being on film, then that's pretty cool. I think that's a, a great thing for like, thanks dad. Like you've got me some really cool moments in these films. Oh God. She's, 
she's she loves it. She loves it. She she every time we'd call her, she'd go again. Yeah, you know, I go, I just need your left hand this time. <laughs> so it's cool. She's she's cool. My kids are cool. With Terrifier, I don't think anybody, especially within the world of horror, expected, and I'm sure you, if you put your hand on your heart and be completely honest, would ever think it would blow up as much as it did. There's so all. many horror makers, there's so many directors, there's so many filmmakers out there that are trying to get their work seen. But this one has blown up. And for me, it's like a, already, even though the first one was only 2016, it feels like a classic, like a cult classic up there with like Child's Play, Scream, these classic horrors that in 10, 20 years, people are going to be like, terrified. You need to see those films, you know? That's cool. I mean, um, you know, it's a testament to what Damien could bring to the table. Um, he, 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 you know, him and George, the DP, when we first did Terrifier, at the end of it, when we were done, we toasted each other because we wrapped the film. And um, he said, uh, George and Damien were, were basically counting money. And I said, God, I truthfully, I said, if we make our money back, we'd be lucky. Um, until it hit Netflix, it was nothing great, you know, no, no, no great um, explosion. But I went to a con and the first con I went to was before Netflix. And I noticed people walking around with all these Arthur the Clown things. And I said, we don't, how the hell did they even get this stuff? And I'm like, and that's when I turned to Damien. I said, we got to go bigger in two. I said, because I started asking him, because like I said, I don't know horror well. I was going, how, how old is that one? How old is that one? How and he's going 25 years, 30 years, this one. I'm going, you know what, Damien, this, this could be big. Yeah. So after Terrifier, I didn't expect it to be huge, but... After seeing that, I said, Terrifier 2 should be a lot bigger. And when we when we finished Terrifier 2, I said, this is good. This is yeah. really good. And the response was incredible. Like, people didn't just go and see it once and say, that's pretty good. People were like three or four times going to see it. I saw so many people dressing up. The Comic Cons and the conventions across the world, not even just in America, across the world. People are so keen to get their photos taken or cosplay and dress up and it's like a it's like a cult following people don't just like this film they it becomes part of their life very very much so i'll tell you it was it it was incredible to to see it happen and and to live it um you know here i am i was retired and uh and i'm like i matter of fact i was grouping around with damien the other day and i said uh Damien, what'd you do to me? I was retired. Yeah, <laughs> I, should, I was ready to put should my be feet relaxing. Up. Yeah. <laughs> it should be relaxing. Do you think that maybe because you've did you've done so much of a, a full on career, uh, especially on Wall Street, that you're just someone that will never stop? Even though Terrifier Free, when it wraps up, you'll be like, let's do something else. Let's get you're just never gonna be able to oh, just yeah, switch no, off completely. I, I, I could never see myself just sitting around doing anything. I, no. I have to I have to be active. Um yeah, I'm actually uh, I'm 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 actually uh, about to start raising funds for Blood Scent. I'll be directing that. Um, same crew, same people. Cool thriller horror. So um, yeah, it's it. I I don't plan on uh, you know. You're going to end up being more busy now than when you're on Wall Street, <laughs> just getting your hands covered in a lot more makeup and blood. There you go. So I know we can't talk too much about it because obviously it's still in production and I don't want to give anything away, but you talked about going from Terrifier 1 and then raising the stakes, making it bigger, making it better for part two. Did you go with the same mentality for part three just to keep on getting bigger, keep on being, doing this on a bigger scale because it can't kind of shrink, can it? It's got to, it's got to just blow up even more. Exactly. We, we always feel the arc has to be going up. Yeah. Um, we we've expanded much from Terrifier two to Terrifier three. It's a much bigger movie. It's it's a it, it's it's we raise the stakes so much. Um, I think I think even just talking about, it, I think people are going to be surprised how much bigger we went. Come on, give me a little bit more. How's it looking? Are you are you getting excited by the footage you've been seeing and the stuff that's been filmed and the the scale of things? I I'd be honest with you, it's very exciting. Um, it's much more than I thought it would be, to yep. be honest. I didn't think it would be this big. Um, the production value on this one is much, much higher. The uh, the amount of kills, much, much more. 
the uh, the in depth kills many more. Um, <laughs> I just think it, I just think the game the story is stronger. Um, I think uh, which even the story in two, even though it was well, terrified, didn't have a story. Terrified two had a story. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm not going to say it was the strongest story, but Terrify a three story is a lot stronger. So you got a better story. You got a bigger, bigger uh, production value, um, bigger cast, bigger crew. Um, I more mean, it's, gore, it, more blood, more deaths. More, death. Yes, yeah. without a doubt. It's, it's, to me, it's, it's the biggest thing I've ever done, and it's probably the coolest thing I've done. Do you believe when we look at cult and i'm talking you know sustainability within horror stuff like the saw franchise and final destination that have i think saws are over 10 films now and final destinations probably has six or seven do you believe there's life for terrifier to go on that long i i think me and damien have the like mind of as long as the fans want it and as yeah. long as we could keep it fresh without tarnishing the 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 uh, series or the franchise i think we'll keep going that being said, if if after terrify say terrify three people don't like it for whatever reason and and we can't build on that, you know why do you go on? If people don't want to see it, why would you do it? If we do terrify three and people are going crazy and say, oh, this is great, we got to have four, and we do four, but now say four, we run out of story. Yeah. Do we want to go on? Do you want to just push it? Do you want to do uh, our art? Art goes to Disney. I don't know. You know, you might you might want to say, all right, listen. We we've we've hit a wall. It's run its course, cool. yeah. Let let's let's close it down. If something comes up later on where we could revitalize it and it's cool, great. But if you hit a story end and you can't make it fresher or you can't make it cool and you can't improve on the last one, then why do it? Yeah, you, you should always be pushing to do better. And like you said, you've already started work on another film with the same sort of people. So it's not like there's only so much gas in this tank. You've got the options to do so much work in so many different environments and hopefully just keep going and keep doing different projects and just always learning as you're going along. Oh, without a doubt. You never stop learning. <laughs> it's going to be good. We've got a couple of minutes left. And what I do on this podcast with every guest that comes on, um, I always ask the question of if there's a song that can be played at the end. So what happens is after we've spoken today, I edit the interview. It gets all polished and goes out there for the world to listen to. But I ask you as the guest today to pick a song that means a lot to you. That's then played at the end of the interview. I'm putting you on the spot. I know it's tough. There's a million songs out there, but I was wondering when I asked the question, if there's a song that comes to your heart and soul above any other song that you'd love to be played. If I can dream by Elvis Presley. Oh, what a fucking tune that is. I love that song. Why do you think that one came to you? Um, because it's so powerful and it's about everything that should be in the world. Yeah. Um, you know, when he sang it, he you could feel it. I, I think he only took two takes on that thing. And um, if if that and you could tell he poured his heart into it. He was uh, to me, he's the best singer I've ever heard. Um, best entertainer I've ever seen. Um, I, I grew up on Dean Martin and Elvis Presley. Um, and Elvis, uh, that's my daughter and my favorite song. Um, my daughter, Lisa Marie, I I've weaned my kids on Elvis. Uh, so, you know, that song resonates a lot. There's a few of his songs, but that's the one that captures everything. Well, as time goes right now, we've got literally one minute left. So what I want to say is thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Uh, I'm sure with the world, the way it is, our paths will cross. There will be a festival or fright fest or a horror con or a screening i know our paths will cross and when we do i'll buy you a beer and uh, hopefully we'll be talking about terrifier six or seven in a few years time oh god bless come out to god's ears i appreciate it thank you so much for having me man it was a pleasure so there's my interview with me and phil Facone. what an amazing guy what a great story and the success he has from that initial investment has been so nice to see also, like I said at the start of today's interview, this isn't the only interview you're going to get for the podcast celebrating the release of Terrifier 3. This is only the first. As you're listening to this, if you come back tomorrow, there's going to be a brand new episode with someone else associated with Terrifier 3. I won't tell you right now who it is, but trust me, you're absolutely going to love the interview. And it's the second part then of three episodes. I'm really spoiling you this week. And if you're a huge fan of horror and Terrifier, you're going to absolutely love the week ahead. Also, I do want to say now, if you're listening to this episode and you're new to Mark and me, all I ask, because these episodes will always remain free, is just to share it. 
Anyone listening surely has a Facebook page, a Twitter account, a TikTok account, or an Instagram. And all I ask is when you see that episode artwork, why not just hit the share button or the retweet button or put it as part of your stories? I see so many people doing it, but the more people do it will bring a big audience to Mark and me. I am a one-man team. I don't have a marketing team or budget to pay for these sponsored posts. I do it all because I love doing it and for the hard work I put in. So all I ask in return is just to share these episodes. I do also have a Patreon account. This is like giving a tip if you go to the restaurant and enjoy a meal. All you have to do is go on markandme.com. There's a link on there and you can sign up each and every month. You'll get exclusive episodes called The Lost Tapes. You get a welcome badge, you get stickers, you get a monthly newsletter. And this is my way of saying thank you for supporting the podcast. The money that comes in via Patreon doesn't pay me for anything. It basically allows me to host the podcast on stuff like Podomatic, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and all that costs a lot of money. So any investment you can do via Patreon really goes a long way. Before I go, let's give a big shout out to the other sponsor of the podcast, Richer Sounds. If you're in the market for a new home cinema surround sound system, maybe some headphones, a new TV to watch stuff like Terrifier, go on richersounds.com or visit any of their high street stores and go and check out all their incredible stuff because they really are the best people out there. Right, as you know, it's less than 24 hours until you get the next episode of Mark and Me. So until then, look after yourself, take care, avoid any clowns, and I'll speak to you all very soon. There must be lights burning brighter Somewhere Got to be birds Flying higher In a sky More blue If I can dream Of a better land Where all my brothers Walk hand in hand Tell me why Oh why Oh why Can't my dream Understanding sometime strong winds of promise that will blow away the doubt and fear. If I can dream of a warmer sun where hope keeps shining on everyone, tell me why. Answer's gonna come Somehow Out there in the dark